The Memphis Grizzlies vs. the LA Lakers is probably the most exciting and interesting first round NBA matchup. The Lakers are a team that have been on fire since the All-Star break with its new additions, while the Grizzlies have been decent but are missing two key players in Brandon Clark and Steven Adams. But despite the Grizzlies being the two seed coming into this game, most NBA experts and people in general have them losing the series overall. And they're barely favorited to win in Vegas at minus 130. I think it's safe to say that if they won the series, it would be somewhat unexpected. How's it going, my friend? I'm Alexander from Load Management Media, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how the Grizzlies can beat the Lakers in the first round and ultimately pull off an upset. I'm going to be breaking it down into four things that the Grizzlies need to do. So with that being said, let's get into point number one. If the Grizzlies want to win this series, John Morant needs to play out of his mind. He needs to be borderline the best player in this series. And I know that that's pretty difficult and kind of wild considering that there's Anthony Davis and LeBron James in this series, but Ja can do it. He was the best player in the series against Golden State last year when he actually played before he got injured. And Steph is a fantastic player, as we know. I think he can do it in this series. It's definitely not out of the realm of possibility. Lakers have been one of the best teams defensively in the NBA, and they pack the paint, which is where Ja loves to get to. So it's definitely not going to be easy. Ja is going to need to make the right reads, especially down the stretch, get into the paint and kick to... The shooters that the Grizzlies do have with Luke Kennard and Desmond Bain. The key here for Ja is that he needs to still get downhill and not settle for threes like sometimes he does when things get tough. The Lakers are going to leave Ja open a lot to shoot these threes and it's just about him finding a balance of getting into the paint and then hitting these shots that he's comfortable with when they go under screens in situations like that. Ja doesn't need to score the most points to be the best player in this series. He just needs to make the right decisions. Attack the paint relentlessly, get downhill, and make the right decisions, and that'll make you the best player in this series. The second thing the Grizzlies need to do if they want any chance of beating the Lakers is they need to defend home court. In the playoffs, as we know, it's always imperative to defend home court at all costs and at all times. But for the Grizzlies, this is especially important considering the way that they play at home and the way that they play on the road. The Grizzlies have the best home record in the NBA at 35 and 6, and they have some of the best fans in the whole association. FedEx Forum gets hella loud, and their defense overall just elevates when they're at home. On the road though, that's a different story. Goodness gracious. Me as a Grizzlies fan, I've watched pretty much every single one of their games, and it's just a different story on the road. They're horrible. With a record of 16 and 25, that's in the middle of the pack, lower middle of the pack. And the worst thing is, is that they especially can't close out games on the road, which is definitely going to be important in the playoffs when the games get tight as pretty much all playoff games get. If I'm 100% honest, the Grizzlies are winning zero games on the road against the Lakers. So that means that they're going to have to win every game at home. And this is just what's going to happen if they want to win this series. The third thing the Grizzlies need to do if they want to win this series is they need to stay out of foul trouble. Specifically, Dylan Brooks and Jaron Jackson Jr. especially. Dylan Brooks is clearly the Grizzlies' best perimeter defender. I mean, everybody knows how much he talks and chats, but it's true. The guy can guard for sure. And he's the Grizzlies' best bet at guarding LeBron, even though they do have some other options. But for Jaron and his overall defensive impact for the whole team, and especially with AD on the Lakers, there's no substitution for him, and he needs to play as many minutes as possible this series. Jaron Jackson Jr. led the league in blocks this year at 3 per game, which is amazing. But he also led the league in fouls per game at 3.6 not so amazing at all. With no Brandon Clark and Steven Adams, the Grizzlies are pretty thin in the front court. You might even see some Kenny Lofton Jr. minutes. I have no idea how that's going to go. But Jaron Jackson Jr. needs to stay on the floor as much as he can for the Grizzlies to have any chance of winning. And to do that, he's got to stay out of foul trouble or at least keep it to a minimum. 
The fourth thing that the Grizzlies need to do to win this series is they need to get out in transition as much as possible. The Grizzlies scored the second most points per game in transition this year at 25.8 per game, while the Lakers give up the fourth most transition points per game this year at 23.4. This is 100% an avenue the Grizzlies can exploit. Of course, as we know, Ja is unbelievable in transition, and Desmond Bain is also one of the top finishers in transition this year, and the Grizzlies love to get out and run. In the playoffs, defenses tend to get much tighter and half court offense is much more frequent so when the grizzlies have the opportunity they need to push the ball at all times and really use their strengths and finish in transition where they're at their best i really see this as an area where the grizzlies can really really exploit the lakers especially with lebron where sometimes he's very slow at getting back in transition I mean, you can't blame the guy, he's like 38 years old, but nevertheless, this is something that the Grizzlies can use to their advantage, and transition offense is something that the Grizzlies are going to need at its maximum capacity if they want to win this series. As a Grizzlies fan, I'm pretty worried about this one. I think it's possible they win, but realistically, I think it's Lakers in 6. It's either Lakers in 6 or Grizzlies in 7. But if the Grizz can do 85% of what I mentioned in this video, then I think that they've got a really strong chance of advancing and moving to the conference semifinals. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see some more consistent content talking about all kinds of different players, teams, and situations, all playoffs long, then this is the place for you. I'm going to be putting out at least one new piece of NBA content a week, so if that interests you, consider hitting a like and a sub. I also created a new channel where I give my thoughts on every NBA game I watch every night pretty much, and it's going to be in two minutes or less. It's called Load Management Media NBA in Two Minutes, so if that interests you, the link will be in the description. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay rested. See you in the next one.